What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Ow, that one hurt. Anyway, today we have the Gen 3 version. That really hurt that time. Gen 3 version of the Caltech Sub 2000. Now, right off the bat, the big thing they changed in the Gen 3 is the forearm. When it folds, it can also twist. So you see that little twisting motion? The previous ones, you either had to buy aftermarket accessories or you couldn't leave the optic on the gun. And it was just a pain. So Caltech finally addressed that. And now it is a uh, twisting folding action. So the optic stays on there. It stays zeroed, folds in half. What a great little small backpack truck gun, whatever you want to use it for. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's start at the back in the stock and work our way forward. So it's a very basic plastic stock, nothing wrong with it. Keeping in mind, this is a very affordable gun. There's three positions. So there's three little holes there that you can adjust it. It has a uh, sling a slot if you wanna add a sling. And then also on the back of the stock is the release for the foreign. So when you have this thing folded up and you want to unfold it, um, the lock uh, clips right into the M lock. You just push that button in and that uh, will unfold the uh, rifle. The safety on here is a cross bolt safety, pretty similar to other long guns with a cross bolt safety. I think it would be pretty cool if they could do an AR-15 style safety. I don't know how much work that would be, but either way, they could be pretty cool. Uh, I did skip the charging handle. Let's go back to that real quick. Um, the charging handle is back here built into the buffer tube. So as you reload, you're gonna have to, you know, come back here and rock it somehow. The only thing I wanna warn you on reloads is when you pull back, to load the gun if you pull to the right or the left the charging handle locks in place and it's a lot of fun i call it the uh, poor man mp5 slap i love slapping that charging handle it's a good time but on reload just make sure you pull straight to the rear and let go because if not you're going to lock the charging handle the charging handle to the rear on accident all right sliding back up to the grip the grip is a, a polymer grip of course uh, there's some, some squares on here, but it's a pretty slick polymer grip. I think you may want to put some talon grips on here or skateboard tape or break out your stipple gun and go crazy because uh, the grip is okay. It's just a little on the slick side. It takes a uh, Glock 19 or Glock 17 mags or anything bigger than that. Um, if you get the 9mm version, I'll say that. It takes Glock 19 or bigger magazine. So you can do the, the stick mags, the drum mags, anything that's bigger than a Glock 19. It will not take the Glock 24 mags, but anything longer than that will be fine. Mag release is kind of like uh, a Glock Gen 3 magazine release. It's kind of like the shape and what it reminds me of. It's not reversible. It does drop the magazines freely, so no, no big deal with the magazine release. Now, the trigger. We gotta talk about the trigger for a second, because the trigger... It's okay, it's not great, it is okay. It's not the worst trigger I've ever felt, but it's definitely not the best. So, um, oh, safety's on. Um, so very, very light take up to the wall. Like no pressure till you get to the wall. And the wall's good, the wall's pretty stout. You know, you, you pull through the wall for a little bit, but the reason I say it's not a great trigger is because of the reset. The reset is not very, tactile and audible and there was a couple times where um, before I was used to the trigger I was kind of short stroking it because I didn't let the trigger out all the way so the trigger's okay um, but it's not the best. Before we take that break and let you get up close and personal and see the trigger, let me quickly thank Natchez. Natchez is the bomb.com. They have you covered. Can't believe I just said that again. Hunting, fishing, camping, pew pews, all that stuff. They're always having good deals. Link is you know where. I also want to uh, mention to you guys mirror safety, nutrient survival. If you're trying to be more prepared like I am, the world is a bit of a crazy place with political and, and worldwide issues and then all these natural disasters that are going on. Nutrient Survival has great adventure food and long-term storage food. Mirror Safety has high quality gas masks. Yes, you can get cheaper ones at your local used ones, but certain things I don't recommend you skimp on and gas mask is one of them. They have all the filters, the gas mask, everything you need. They also have armor and a bunch of other stuff also. Discount codes for both companies are up on the screen if you want to save a few bucks. Helps me out. I appreciate the link to both of them or also you know where. Now, let's get up and personal and close with this trigger so you can decide what you think about it. What'd you think of the trigger? It's not terrible. I just wish the reset was a little more tactile or audible, preferably tactile, either one would be fine. All right, 
Uh, a lot of polymer on the gun, as you would expect from kel -Tec. Not that that's a big deal or an issue. The internals are all metal, but the grip, the, the hand guard, all that stuff is, is polymer. The trigger guard is also polymer, and that's going to be the release or the break for the forend. So you pull that forward, and that releases uh, the forend. Now, you can spin it either way. So if you want the optic to face one way, you want the optic to face the other way. I don't think it really matters unless it's going to affect the storage and where you're, and where you're keeping it. But... Um, yeah, you can fold it either way. So the handguard is all polymer, like I said. Each side has M lock, so you can add a light laser doohickey, whatever you want. The bottom has Picatinny rail. I'm thinking like a small fall grip or something. If you want it on there, you could do so. The top is also Picatinny rail. I threw this uh, small Swamp Fox Kraken on here. I wanted something smaller, lightweight, durable enough, enclosed. That fits all the bill. I have a lot of rounds on this, and uh, it is held up extremely well. But you can put a bunch of different accessories on here if you want. The barrel underneath is a, a, uh, about a 16 inch barrel. It's a one in 10 twist. Again, this is nine millimeter. The nine millimeter takes the Glock mags. The 5.7 version will take uh, the FN 5.7 mags. Either one will is available. It has some sort of nitrite, melanite, whatever finish. Plenty accurate. I think it's gonna be ac more accurate than 90% of the shooters out there and probably me too. On the end, you do have a threaded barrel. And I mentioned it because this would be a really good suppressor hose if you are in a free-ish state, a little more free than the god-awful one I live in, then I can't have suppressors. But I'm not mad about it. I forgot to look up the thread pitch, so I apologize for my unprofessional research. I'll put it up here on the screen what the thread pitch is, but either way, great, great suppressor host. Um, dimensions open, dimensions closed, wait, look at that. My dog just came in and opened the door. Knucklehead. Talk about unprofessional. Opened, <laughs> closed, wait, and then roughly the street price, MSRP price right now. I'll put a bunch of links down you know where, and hopefully I can find you a good deal. As far as testing, I have somewhere between three to 400 rounds on it. It wasn't the type of testing where I went to the range and put hundreds of rounds in one day. I spread it out. I put a couple mags through this gun every single time I went to the range for the past few months, and it ended up at three or 400 rounds. I did a little bit of playing around, like folding it and storing it in my vehicle different places, which is kind of cool, and in a bag, and but as far as the shooting, just normal plinking, magazine exchanges, hitting steel. Through the rounds I shot, I had no problems, no issues, no malfunctions, no nothing that I need to report to you. Now my dog is sitting down there moping because I called him unprofessional. <laughs> He's sad about it. All right, let's talk about let's talk about the pros. The biggest pro I got to give Caltech in general is going to be the value. All their guns are made in the U.S. and they come in at very very attractive pricing. So you, I got to mention the value fresh. As far as this specific firearm, the biggest advantage to the sub 2000 is the folding nature that the gun folds in half and can take up a very small footprint. Um, now that they added the folding and rotating for it, now that it rotates, that was the biggest con to the Sub-2000 and uh, good on them for, for adding that to it. Now you can add your lights, lasers, doohickeys, you get the M-Lock, you got the pick rails, you have all that stuff. I love that it takes Glock mags, especially if you happen to carry a Glock and you have magazine interchangeability, that's great. Or if you get the F... Um, the FN, um, sorry, if you get the 5.7 version and you carry an FN 5.7 for some reason, again, you have magazine interchangeability. As far as the things I would change, the only thing I would change or improve is going to be the reset on the trigger. I wish it was just a little more tactile, a little more audible. Again, keeping in mind this is a budget-friendly gun, it wouldn't stop me from using this for some sort of self-defense, but if I had my way, I would like to see that reset on the trigger a little bit better. Overall, it's hard to beat, again, the value that kel puts forward. It's a solid choice for an affordable secondary gun, backup gun. Once again, especially if you carry a Glock with the Glock magazines and you can swap your magazines from your primary to your secondary, now that's a major, major advantage. It could absolutely uh, work if you want a backpack gun or a truck gun, a bedside gun. Any way you need a small collapsible folding thing, this would be a very, very good option. All right, that's all I got for you. If you have any questions, please leave them down. Let me thank Caltech for their support. This is not the first time they supported the channel. Hopefully, it won't be the last time they support the channel because they got some cool, funky guns, and I was looking at like looking at cool, funky guns. And once again, links down there. Hopefully, I can find you a good deal. Nachez is the coolest, the biggest, baddest. Thank you. 
to not just for their support. It's greatly appreciated. Mera Safety and Nutrient Survival, again, I highly recommend. If you are not prepared with some long-term food storage and a gas mask and maybe some armor or whatever you're gonna feel you need to be more prepared for you and your family, I would start thinking and start investing in some of those things. If you're gonna get anything from Mera or Nutrient, there's a discount code to save you a few bucks, but I highly recommend you start getting prepared. Even if you don't take advantage of those two companies and those two discount codes, please start getting yourself prepared. Even if it's with like a week or two uh, of uh, long-term food, at least start there and then go from there. Anyway, I'm all done chilling. I'm all done talking. Thank you very much for watching. It is greatly greatly appreciate if you think i deserve it please click that subscribe button if you're here all the way at the end of the video you must not think i'm terrible and you must think i deserve a subscribe i appreciate it santa says thank you and i will see you in the next video stay blessed be good peace